Have you ever wondered what makes the perfume fragrance come out in such a fine misty spray? What's inside a perfume bottle? And how does it work? Well, if you have a curious mind, then come with me. Come and discover the clever little design that makes it all happen. Before we start, it's worth noting that there are different varieties of perfume bottles out there. However, we will focus on one with a historically more familiar look, like this one. Perfume spray cans work by breaking a liquid into tiny droplets that form a fine misty spray. This process is called atomization. Atomization occurs when a liquid is forced through a tiny space or a small hole otherwise known as an orifice or simply a nozzle. This subjects the liquid to high pressure and causes rapid acceleration such that the liquid exits the nozzle at high velocity and breaks up into tiny droplets. Now, for this to happen, a simple but clever valve mechanism comes into play. Before we dissect and take a closer look at the valve and its functionality, let's start with the spray can body and see how the perfume product is contained within. The first thing to note though is that the spray can is a small pressure vessel. Let's elaborate. Pressure vessels are containers that hold fluids under pressure. This simply means the pressure inside the container is greater than the atmospheric pressure outside the container. As we shall see, this pressure is essential to how the spray can functions. Now, some common examples of pressure vessels are domestic gas tanks, fire extinguishers, and liquid petroleum gas tanks. Notice that these tanks have domed or dished ends which are specifically designed to withstand or contain fluid pressure. We see these dished ends on the perfume spray cans. The general concept of strength behind a dished end is similar to that of an architectural arch. The bottom of the spray can is inverted, or in other words, it looks upside down. This has the advantage of making it easier to utilize most of the perfume product when it's near empty. And it also simply provides stability to the can when placed upright. The perfume spray can essentially contains two fluids, the product in liquid form and the propellant, usually in gaseous form, but it can be liquefied due to pressure. The product is the actual perfume content which is poured into the can before sealing it. The propellant is the agent that expels, or we can say, propels the perfume product out of the can. It's pumped in through the valve system under pressurized conditions and it occupies the upper part of the can as it has a low density compared to the perfume product. Some common examples of propellants are hydrocarbon gases such as propane and butane. So, the important question here is, how does the valve work? Well, a look at its individual parts will set us up for a better understanding. Here we go. This term. This is the part of the valve system which allows or regulates the product to pass through to the nozzle. A little hole located within this groove creates an entry passage. It's called a metering hole. Its size determines the rate at which the product is dispensed. Now, we see a demonstration of the perfume product enter this little hole and exit through the top outlet. A stem gasket comes in. It fits within the groove and closes off the metering hole. With this, the valve assumes a closed position. A spring takes up its position at the bottom end of the stem. It fits tightly into a groove. Later, we will see how it assists in the actuation process of the valve. Now, the housing unit comes through. It's cylindrical in shape with an upper part that consists of an inner chamber. The top of the housing unit is designed like the upper part of a castle's turret. This helps to accommodate and keep the stem gasket in place, as we can see here. The chamber accommodates the stem, 
the spring, as well as the gasket. The bottom end of the housing has an opening that leads to the chamber. The deep tube connects to the housing unit. Vapor tap. This is a little hole by the side of the housing unit. When the valve is open, it allows a small amount of the propellant vapor to enter and mix with the product. This helps break the product into smaller droplets. At this point, it's essential to assemble the rest of the spray can parts before we finally see how the valve works. A mounting cap drops in. To clearly show its positioning and primary function, we cut it in half. The same is done to the housing unit. We see that the mounting cap secures the stem gasket between itself and the housing unit. Notice how the shape of the upper housing unit fits well into the mounting cap to secure it in place. The top seal gasket is inserted right within the top folding inner space of the mounting cap, obviously to avoid leakages. The top cover is next. It's fixed to the mounting cap. For a better graphical view, we cut it in half as well. Notice the dome shape on the top cover and the mounting cap. Here we see how the top cover is secured to the mounting cap with this little dimple acting as a lock. The main body is fixed to the top cover. It's basically a cylindrical shell, usually made of thin steel and coated with tin. Needless to say, a cylindrical shape is best suited to handle pressure. At the base of the shell comes the dome shape bottom. We see how it's tightly connected to the shell. A sealant occupies this tight space to eliminate any chance of leakages. At the very top of the spray can is the actuator, a cap-shaped piece on which force is applied to activate the spraying process. It accommodates the insert nozzle. The nozzle is the little piece that lets out the perfume and creates a fine spray through a precisely designed tiny hole. Now, to fully explain the spraying process, we zoom in on the valve mechanism once again. In this current position, the valve is closed. As seen before, the stem gasket blocks the small metering hole that opens up the valve. When the actuator is pressed, it pushes the stem downwards and releases it from the gasket. This frees up the metering hole and the valve is open. A clear passage is formed from inside to the outside. The spring is now compressed and loaded. Once the force on the actuator is released, it unloads and pushes the stem and actuator back to their original positions. This effectively closes the valve and nothing comes out. Let's open the valve once again and explain product movement. Once the metering hole is open, things immediately start happening. A low pressure zone is created in the housing chamber. This invites the pressurized propellant to push on the perfume product and force it up the deep tube. A fluid will always move from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Represented by red particles, we see the product entering the housing chamber. At the same time, represented by green particles, a small amount of the propellant vapor flows into the chamber through the vapor tap hole. The product and the propellant mix and enter the stem through the metering hole. The stem directs the fluid up to a small chamber on the upper section of the actuator. This chamber has an opening that leads to an intricately designed passageway that takes the mixture into a small space behind the insert nozzle. From here, a narrow circular channel is created by a protruding little shaft that directs the mixture into the insert nozzle where it's eventually forced out as a very fine misty spray. However, a bit of action happens in the nozzle insert just before the fluid exits. The insert actually has spiral shaped channels within its back hollow part. So let's remove the actuator and take a closer look. 
The hollow section of the inset is known as a swell chamber. Here, we see how the channels are configured. They cause the fluid to swell as it is directed to the center where the tiny nozzle hole is situated. This swelling action helps to mechanically break up the fluid into much smaller droplets. So, as the droplets exit the nozzle, the propellant particles mix with the air and evaporate, further breaking the product into tiny droplets. Other factors such as surface tension, aerodynamic drag, and turbulence further help in atomizing the fluid into a fine misty spray. Now, take note, the term atomizing or atomization has been used here, but in reality, the particles are never broken down to their atomic level. My name is Enoch Chumbori. I'm a mechanical design draftsman who just loves working on 3D animated stuff. Everything in this video was modeled, textured, animated, rendered and edited in a free 3D software called Blender. Thank you for watching Inno Graphics.